sometimes being young and trying things, you're so naive and you don't know any better, all you do is learn. And if you fail, it doesn't matter. And so whether I was nine, 10, 12, 16, 21, the failures were irrelevant. And you know, whether you're you know, nine, 12, 16, 21, 22, 24, you know, I'm sleeping on the couch. You know, I have a car with a hole in the floorboard. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm living like a bum and, and like a student. And so what did I have to lose? And so I think that influenced me as much as anything. So, it was, you know, my dad was like, go for it. You know, don't, why not? What have you got to lose? You know, you have to sleep on a different couch. So I think that that was motivation. The type of person you are, that, you know, kind of points to the things you're good at. Are you 12? You're not going to know. Are you yeah. 16? You're not going to know. If you're 18, maybe if you have a, spe a special talent, yeah. right? You know, you can throw a baseball 100 miles an hour. You can sing and your voice is incredible. You know, you're, you know, a concert pianist. You're a chess grandmaster. If you have a specific skill set or talent that just immediately propels you to the top, yeah, you want to follow that. Yeah. But I remember having a list. I still have it. Um, when I graduated from college, I was getting ready to graduate, and all the different industries that I thought I might want to partake in. When you find something you're good at, yeah. go for it. I, I was never really into technology when I was a kid, yeah. but then as I got a job that used it, I found out I was good at it. And once I found out I was good at it, then it became a lot more fun. Yeah. You know, when you're good at something, it's almost always fun. Yeah, right? yeah. And once it was fun, and I combined that with you know my business skills, then I saw, okay, I know how to make money at this stuff because yeah. I know how to sell. Now I know tech. That gives me something I love to do. And so, you know, what I what I tell people, the key is find something you love to do and be great at it. You just have to try different things, and even even if 99% of them fail, you only have to be right one time. You don't have to figure it all out in advance. You can be wrong, you can pick the wrong career, you can pick the wrong job, you can pick the wrong spouse, you can pick the wrong whatever. But you get it right one time, you're set. But if you don't try, and if you don't go out there and try all those different things, you'll never get that one time. And so it, it's not a question of, okay, how much different, different stuff do I do or how many different things should you try? Try them all. Try them all until you find the one you like. And then it's like, it gets really easy because even when it's up, you're on a mission. You're loving what you do, you know, and then, then it gets easy. And so that's just the approach I've always tried to instill in people who work for me and, and myself. I knew I was wired to be excited about business. How or why, I don't know, but you know, and there's certain guys that have the genetics to jump out of the gym, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's certain guys, you know, that, you know, when they golf, they have the muscle memory and, and the discipline, you know, Dirk, um, Nowitzki may not be the most talented guy in the NBA, but his discipline and his focus to do what's necessary to be successful, he's willing to do and combine it with being seven feet tall and being skilled, you know, it makes him an amazing basketball player. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. You know, will that make you 250 grand? It depends if you pick the right industry. But whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance. Because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm -hmm. I actually work mm -hmm. like someone's spending 24 hours, working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the way I look at it. I remember asking my dad to, um, I wanted new basketball shoes because I was a basketball junkie back then. He's like, well, your shoes work. If you want a new pair of tennis shoes, you have to go out there and get a job. And I'm like, Dad, I'm, I'm 12 years old. And it just so happens he was playing poker with his buddies. And one of his buddies was like, well, I got a job for you. I've got these garbage bags that we distribute. You can sell them door to door. I'm like, OK. And it was when I was selling them and realizing that I like to sell and that I could sell and that I recognized that selling was, it was about providing a service and creating value for people that I knew that I, I would, I literally back then, I knew that I could always succeed. Um, I mean, I remember I was 16, I think, when I, I started a stamp company and started going to, to stamp shows and trade shows and just working a little bit harder than other people and, and trading up from one stamp to the next. I remember one time I started with a quarter and bought a stamp and left with $50, thinking, hey, if I could do this, I could do anything. And, and it's not that everything worked. I failed a lot, but I never ever felt like I, I wouldn't be able to work hard enough to succeed. I also always say it's not about passion. 
Everybody's got passion for something, yeah. right? Don't follow your passions, follow your efforts. Because okay. people say, you know, I was passionate to play baseball. I was passionate yeah. to play basketball. It yeah. doesn't mean I, all of a sudden I was going to be good enough. Yeah. But I found myself spending, being really curious about business, being really curious about technology. And that curiosity is really what drove me. And I think, particularly if you're young today, curiosity is great. Always learning and trying to find new things and being curious about new things. Because that's what leads you to that path. Trying to figure out in advance. Yeah. That's hard because you don't know what you yeah. don't know. Be prepared. Understand, put yourselves in the shoes of the people or the businesses that you're working with. The message that I just got on Cyberdust is a perfect example. If he would have put himself in my shoes, it would be obvious that Cyberdust is important to me. I'm trying to push everybody to message using it. I volunteered and Dave mentioned that, hey, I'm gonna be answering questions long after this is over from you people, from everybody sending me messages. So Cyberdust is obviously important to me. And so if you're able to do something that reflects something that's important to me or whoever it is that you're working or trying to get a job with or trying to get an internship with or trying to get an investment from, if you can put yourself in their shoes and put yourself in context of what's important to them, your chances of being successful increase 99%, a thousandfold, right? And one other point I'll leave with you, right? If you're working for somebody, the best way to be successful is by reducing the stress of those around you. It's not about you. I mean, it's always about me, but that's a different point. But <laughs> it's not about you. It's about the people around you. If you're reducing the stress of the people around you, those are the people, those people start to gravitate towards you. They want to work with you because you make going to work easier, more pleasant. You help them accomplish their goals. You help put them in a position to succeed by reducing their stress. You know, Shark Tank, I do the show not because they're great investments, but I do the show because it sends the, the message to, to kids 8 to 80 that the American dream is alive and well. Um, you know, you can watch the show and, and come to realize that somebody out of Iowa or, you know, the middle of nowhere in Texas can start a company and, you know, turn it into something special. And I think, you know, so many families watch the show together that it's just... You know, it, particularly in this day and age when so many people are saying what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that and what's wrong with America, it just really reinforces that, you know, somebody with an idea who's willing to, you know, go beyond just an idea to a company phase and really work, something special can happen. And, yeah. and you know, just reinforcing that I, is, is really important to me. What makes it work is like, everybody's got ideas, yeah. right? And most people just think, oh, it's my idea and I don't have this, right? Mm -hmm. The people that get it done, they, they don't look at the obstacles, they look at the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of coming up and saying, oh, I wish I had a connection, wish I had money, wish I had this. Like this, this dude with the surfboard, man. He went out and got a, found a used surfboard and he started putting it all together and it was just his time. Yeah. You know, and then he he took it, built one, figured it out, built another one, and then it's the same thing with some of the other, uh, pretty much all the other companies where, you know, rather than finding the excuses why they can't do it, they find the reasons to make it work, and then they just bust bust their ass, and and good things happen. Mm -hmm.